Welcome back to the Rare Book Muse channel. Today I'm really excited. Someone asked for me to show more examples of the books I have illustrated by Arthur Rackham. He's super cool and the books I have with his illustrations are really beautiful so I'm really happy to get to share them with people. Arthur Rackham was British and he started out in his career at turn of the century. Um, he had a little bit of a macabre sort of take on things very different from some of the illustrators in his time. He really thrived on the color printing with hand-tipped um, embellishment before things were actually published. And because he was popular, when that style was popular, he was really at the height of the market. There are a lot of cool books that he illustrated and different publishers took different approaches. And I have a bunch of different examples that I'm excited to show you. This is the earliest one I have. This is a book from a private library. So some extremely posh British person had a book written about their gardens. Uh, this is dated 1899 and it is published by J.M. Dent. So a big publisher in London. I've seen a lot of things published around that time. There aren't a ton of Rackham illustrations in here. There are actual photographs with tissue overlay and then can show you some of the there's woodcut illustrations as accents and in this one his signature is actually in the bottom here and this is some of his early work so you can see the inkling of he would be good at illustrating stories this is not a story but um, the illustrations in here are pretty indicative of what he ends up being great at I showed this in a previous video I have the Alice in Wonderland this is one of the best it, it it isn't the original, of course, the original illustrator um, of, of Alice in Wonderland, but this is one of the big popular versions and there are several different editions. This is an early one from England and I'm really lucky to have it. It has beautiful end papers that he illustrated. And then the illustrations in this one, there, here's an example of the black and white, which are really cool and a little bit creepy. I mean, Alice in Wonderland is a little creepy, so these illustrations are not outliers. But the color illustrations in this edition, they have a tissue overlay and then there are these beautiful, these are flat printed and you can kind of tell there's a border here because in the really fancy original, they were not, they were just barely attached and placed individually into the book. This edition is 19 teens and it is Heinemann. This is a British publisher and they did a bunch of Rackham books. I have one other one that is just so pretty. It's Aesop's Fables, and this has been slightly rebound. The, um, the binding has been redone. And I actually can't tell. Sometimes people do this because there's damage. Sometimes they do it because they want their whole library to match, and so they redo all of the binding. I found this in a bookstore in California when I was on a business trip. I snatched it up. I thought about it. I pondered it. I took it home with me. I'm so glad. It feels really good. It feels really heavy and significant. Um, the same publisher, this is Heinemann, and I can show you there's really cool woodcuts in here. And then very similar, the color illustrations are that same. They're flat printed and then they have this really fancy tissue overlay to protect it from the paper and the pages. With Heinemann, they took that approach. There were previous versions by other publishers that would have been numbered and limited editions. There are Arthur Rackham editions of these same books that you could get in vellum, which are out of my price range, but I do like to admire them. This is an obscure, this is a book I have not seen illustrated by anyone else or in any other format. I don't even know how to pronounce this, but it seems to be sort of a water nymph thing, which is very, um, that's an Arthur Rackham thing, a little bit creepy, a little bit of a fable. Here is the title page and you can see the frontispiece, this illustration that faces the title. It has that tissue here. It's a larger format, but it, this is it's still Heinemann. This is the same approach. Really pretty book. Okay, and those are still were in the 19 teens. This is also 19 teens. This is a bound copy of a periodical from England. And I will show you the title page here. It is called St. Nicholas. A periodical for young folk and um, I, this was apparently really popular in England and people love them enough that they rebound them so you'll see them like this in bookstores sometimes this one's pretty nice sometimes it's just a tweed cover whatever they decided to use to bind them up and put them on their shelves this one 
has a bunch of Arthur Rackham illustrations in it. So these are individual periodicals, but some of the illustrations are our friend Arthur Rackham. And you can see there's some woodcut and some color, and there are several of the individual magazines in this book that have Rackham illustrations. And this is really cool, I think, that one of the editions, months, of St. Nicholas has an actual article about Arthur Rackham, the wizard. Isn't that cool? There's an interview with him and pictures of his house and they talk about his career and his history. And I felt so lucky to find this because I see these every now and then, the St. Nicholas rebounds, and they usually don't have any Arthur Rackham. So I don't think the bookstore realized this one had some special stuff in it. I got a little bit lucky. This is Peter Pan in Kensington Garden. This is not quite the Peter Pan I remember from a kid. This is not the story that is just Peter Pan. Um, this story went through some evolution. It was a play, and then it was a book, and then it was another book, and then it was a different kind of book. There's also multiple editions. This one is Scribner's. This was printed in the United States. I think we're about 1920s here. There are a bunch of editions of this. It went through a lot of different versions, just like the book. And this one has a nice gilt on the cover. It was also flat printed, which is plain print a little bit later. So this is a nice edition. And you can see they take a slightly different Scribner's also. You can see here's the black and white. This is what the woodcuts look like. And then this is the color. There's no tissue. So it's a little bit more economical probably to produce and a little less expensive to buy. Scribner's. Still 1920s. This one is Dodd, Mead & Company. So this is a U.S. publisher. They also published a lot of Arthur Rackham. And I think this is undated. Check my work. Undated. But this is, I think, probably 1920s. And this one has that. These are actual paper illustrations. They're only attached at the top of the page. So these are actual... Somebody went over this with paint and um, embellished them before they were printed in the book. So... This book to me is just art. It's amazing that this is how we used to buy books and have them with actual things, actual art inside of them. So I love getting to share them with you because normally they just sit on my shelves and I take them every now and then and look at them, but I love letting other people see them. And don't worry, I'll show you some close-ups. I also have a Harrop is another London publisher. A little bit later, they reprinted some of the Arthur Rackham books, and this is 30s, 40s. So these are just fairy tales, and I'll show you. This is kind of a cool cover. I've seen it without the dust jacket many times, but very rarely with the dust jacket. And this is also, you can see the end papers. They kept the same illustrations as some of the fancier editions, but in this one, they did make it a little bit more accessible this is all flat printed so it's a little it was probably um, a little bit more frugal to purchase at the time in the 30s or 40s and then we have who are you publisher oh David McKay David McKay um, I think Philadelphia is that right Philadelphia maybe they had more and more location these were some of the original publishers for U.S. editions. This is The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. What a cool way to look at Arthur Rackham with his slightly creepy bed. So, and I love this story, and I try to read this every year on Halloween. So you can see end papers. Fantastic. And, let's see, is there a date on this one? It's not dated, so I'm guessing a little bit about the date. They do have the frontispiece and the tissue, and you can see just perfect. This guy, I think Arthur Rackham and I would have gotten along. This is what the black and white illustrations look like in this book. And that's what most of the David McKay have seen a few of these. This is how they tended to print them. And then here's one of the color ones. And you can see over here they have the title in some of the fancier editions that's on the tissue. There's no tissue in these. So it's probably at the time when it came out, whenever that was, a mystery, uh, probably a little less expensive. The most recent reprinter is a company called Weathervane in the United States, and these are very, um, these are much less expensive and less rare. So if you're interested in getting a copy and you want to be in um, maybe the ten to twenty dollar range for most books, Weathervane is a good way to go. I have their Poe, 
this is, I had never found a copy by another publisher that was anywhere in my budget. So this was pretty good. It's a large format. Most of the weather themes are a little bit smaller. But this is 1970s. They kept the original end papers. Super creepy. And I can show you the title page. So they have a frontispiece. And again, there's no tissue paper, but this is what it looked like in the first editions. So you get a flavor of what Arthur Rackham was up to with Poe. And I can show you one more. This is with the black and whites. I think that in the David McKay's, the black and whites do pretty well as a reprint. And the colors, the color, you can imagine, I showed you some of the ones where it's pasted in the book or someone maybe hand tipped it. Um, it's hard to do that as a reprint in any kind of um, easy, accessible price range. So the color printing in the weather veins is definitely muted, I would say. But still, you can appreciate what Arthur Rackham was doing. In any event, there are a bunch of different publishers. He did illustrate many books, which is great because I can still go find them. And uh, I'm happy to show you a, a few more of the illustrations, so let's go take a look.
thanks so much for taking a look at my Arthur Rackham collection. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And if you see anything else from my library that you would like to see more details or more between the covers, just let me know and I'll take care of it for you. Subscribe so you won't miss it. Thanks for watching and happy reading.